inquiring minds around the world, coast to coast to coast, and all the ships at sea. Welcome to the first ever Inquiring Minds Live. It might be the last ever. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Let's see if there's anybody here. Hello, there's Torhilda. Tor Torhilda. Did I say that right? I've been practicing your name. I see Willem. It feels like romper room. I see Willem, and I see Russell, and I see Sebastian, and there's Sailcat. Hey, Sailcat. Perfect. Torhilder. Hello from Canada to Belgium. Is it too loud, Sunray? Loud and clear. Excellent. Yay. I've been practicing. My poor wife. She has to sit up in her office and watch me live chat privately to her so I can practice. <laughs> Excellent. So, I have a few things that uh, I wanted to talk about today. Uh, one is that it's Fountain Pen Day. Happy Fountain Pen Day, everyone, 2023. And I'm going to get you guys uh, to help me shop for a pen. Uh, but I'll do that a little bit later. How many people? We have 25 people here. Excellent. Uh, I thought I would do a question and answer uh, sequence that you can ask me questions and I will uh, avoid answering, truthfully. Um, and then I'll give you a preview of uh, what might be coming up on my channel um, by showing you some of the pens that I've ordered uh, on my computer. Hello, Klaus from Germany. Hi, Harry. Happy Fountain Pen Day. James, good to see you. Uh, you are on 32, a 32-inch 32 screen. Oh, my God. Does it add 20 pounds of weight? I'm, sh I'm told that the camera adds 20 pounds. I'm actually very svelte, you see. Hey, Stefan from Germany, all around the planet. There's TJ. What up, TJ? Did you get yourself something to eat? There's Mag Magmuficat. Magmuficat. Happy Fountain Pen Day. Go Canucks. See, the Flames are having a, uh, a season start just like Vancouver did last year. Only no one's throwing their jerseys on the ice just yet. Hey, James from Boston. Happy Fountain Pen Day to Sam G. A Wingsung 630 showed up in my mailbox today. Well, 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 I just happen to have mine right here. I've been writing with it for the last couple of days. Um... I'm putting together my uh, best of and worst of 2023 list uh, to prepare for my videos on those subjects in December. And this Wingsong 630, especially I've got the 14 karat gold nib uh, version, is going to the top of the list, I believe. There's Zathras. Happy Fountain Pen Day. Aaliyah Rose. Hi. Hey, Italiano. Happy, happy Fountain Pen Day, Alessandro. Hey, R. I know a lot of people named R. You wouldn't be my best friend, R, would you? He never joins in. TJ has ordered a Gravitas pocket pen. I bet it's not like this one. That's a cork. Yeah, <laughs> Babylon 5. The greatest series I never watched. Hey, Pat from Minnesota. How are things in Minnesota? So, I've got my list of things to do. I've written it out in longhand here. Uh, question and answers. What's coming on Inquiring Minds? Pen sales, because that's where you're going to help me uh, buy a fountain pen today on uh, Yoast Applebaum's website. And uh, I want to ask you all about uh, future live streams. If this is successful at all, I might actually have more of them. And I have a number of topics. And I'm going to ask you for a number of topics that we might have as themes for our live chats. Torhilder says, I'm waiting for Wingsung to release the Square Ends version of the 630 with the steel nib. Yeah, I have uh, one of those Square End uh, version of the Wingsung um, but in, in not in the piston filler, the cartridge converter. Oh, oh, maybe it's a piston filler. Oh, you got a rainbow, TJ. That's nice. And Iruta J says, Hi, have you tried any Indian brand? Which one is your favorite? I've tried a, a few Indian brands, 
and uh, by far my favorite is Ranga. I've got three Rangas. I've got a, a Ranga Abimanyu. I've got uh, a Ranga um, 5C and a 4C in Ebonite. Uh, the Abimanyu is in acrylic, beautiful, like root beer like acrylic. Hey, George. Happy FBD. Russell has a custom made pen from On a Whim Woodworking on its way. Is that your fountain pen day? purchase i should ask you guys what have you purchased or what do you plan to purchase on fountain pen day sebastian has a majon now well, we say majon majon q1 that's a quirky little pen i agree tor hilder yeah the the quality of the ranga is head and shoulders above everything else i've tried i won't even talk about the other uh indian pens i've tried Hey Bangladesh, happy found day, happy fountain pen day. Almighty Om, what is fascinating to me right now, fountain pens might be a way to bridge the gap between digital and somatic learning for our kids. Well, as a educator for 35 years, thank, thank the Lord, I'm not doing it anymore. But uh, I learned over those 35 years that writing something down reinforces it in the mind it's how we all used to study when back in the day when we used uh, stone carvings on the wall uh, but in order to study you read and you wrote and you wrote and you read and you made notes and it reinforces it in your mind and a fountain pen does that even more so Sailcat has a waterman expert l'essence de bleu on its way I have a Waterman that I picked up. I think it's Waterman Expert 1. I picked up it at, um, at a, a vintage, not a vintage store, um, an antiques shop. And I was going to do a renovation or restoration video on it. Willem has an Asvine 126. They're very, very nice pens. That's the vacuum filler. That's going to be on my list of the best of 2023. The Night Owl's back. What did you have for lunch? Mont Blanc Noblesse in silver with chrome trim. Well, aren't we the fancy pants? A Mont Blanc. I don't own, own a Mont Blanc. I do have a Mont Blanc here. But whenever I need a Mont Blanc, there's the, the snowy cap. Whenever I need a Mont Blanc, I just ask Jack. I, in fact, this Mont Blanc, uh, I'm going to switch over to my desk camera to see if it works uh, there is my leonardo momento zero blue hawaii that does the opening scribble in my video here's jack's Montblanc 149 i was doing a comparison of the 149 with the wing sung 630 um, I wanted to do a video on that. I did it a few months ago. And so I needed a one, Mont Blanc 149 in which to compare it. So I went over to Jack's place and I said, can I borrow 149? He goes, yeah, which one? So he brought out about 10, 15 149s. And um, he actually put this one together. He brought a bunch of nibs and different feeds, different bodies, and sort of built a Frankenstein uh, Mont Blanc 149 for me with which to play and that was very nice of him so that's the only Mont Blanc I have right now it doesn't belong to me hot noodles for lunch attaboy almighty Ohm has a Mont Blanc in the bank well what's it doing in the bank is it attached to a to a chain let fig boot send me further down the rabbit hole. Ordered a radius prism for FPD last night. Had a boy, James. I can't imagine having 10, 10 or 15. I mean, I, I go to Jack's place and it's like a kid in a candy store. He just brings out oodles and oodles of incredible, uh, even, um, a, his Leonardo connect collection is just out of this world. Hey, Stashy. Him Ben Ad Abdallah. Welcome. 
first ever fountain pen was made in Palestine, the cradle of civilization. Our hearts with the Palestinians, the whole world supports Palestine. Yeah, well, uh, the whole world supports both sides uh, in various amounts in this conflict. And we're not going to talk about that because this is fountain pen day and we're not going to get into politics or the ravages of the world will retreat into our writing. Sam snagged a Sailor Pro Gear, Pro Gear Slim on Amazon. 75 bucks, that's a great price. Yes, William, I saw the lever filler. I saw that lever filler from Leonardo um, six months ago on Yost's uh, interview with uh, Salvatore. And I kept asking Salvatore, he never answers me, but I kept asking, when's the lever filler coming out? When's the lever filler coming out? Because I think it uh, would be terrific. And then I saw the price saying, eh, okay, yeah, well, I'll borrow it from Jack. <laughs> no doubt he'll get one. Harry's going to buy an Opus 88 wine at Cult Pens. Cult Pens has a sale on for Fountain Pen Day, um, 10%. Um, you can get that 10% just by going to any one of my videos and looking in the description and clicking on the link for Cult Pens and you'll get 10% uh, off as a new customer of Cult Pens anyway, any day. Uh, Apple Bomb today has 20% off right across the board, not on specific things, but everything across the board. Uh, so that's where I'm going to buy my pen today and you're going to help me. P90 Camper got an Asvine 126. It's a wonderful pen. And the P20 is a wonderful uh, wonderful pen as well, the piston filler. Is that my computer making a noise? Ah, I see. That's what happens when my phone rings when I've got it set to camera mode. Russell asked, did, did I buy the 2023 ink vent? No, I did not this year. Last year, it was my first ink vent calendar. I bought it in August, pre-ordered it in August. And then I did one video a day from December 1st through December 25th. It was a lot of work and no one watched the videos. So, and I've got a ton of ink left back here in little tiny bottles that I don't know what to do with. Uh, so... I did not take the plunge this year into the ink vent calendar. If there's an ink there that I like um, in the uh, calendar, I will order it individually. It, TJ, isn't yours giving you an extra discount? <laughs> no, no, he does not give me a discount. Do I look like uh, Stephen Brown at all? No, I don't. So uh, Stephen gets all of his pens from Yoast and it might be the fact that they've known each other for 30 years and they're both Dutch. Uh, or it could be that uh, Yost doesn't get my sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> it could be all of those things. But no, I don't get an extra discount from Apple Bomb. Thank you for watching every Ink Vent calendar uh, video last year, Harry. I appreciate that very much. Hey, Ocan9, Sancho, California. Is it snowing? George watched too. Well, all of you uh, subscribers probably watched them, but uh, not many other people did. That took my entire November, end of November, I made all those videos and set them to come out every single day. This live stream might be a, a lot of work. I had the, I spent a week or more trying to just learn this streaming software and figuring out how it works getting everything working um, but it's a lot less work than the ink vent calendar was that's for sure Marilyn Gardner hi Marilyn do you have any guess as to whether Apple bomb would entertain a request with my order to choose a certain type of pattern on a pen with a variable resin um, I'm going to hazard a guess at no um, you don't look like Stephen Brown either, so you probably can't get your personal color made by Jonathan Brooks and uh, manufactured by Leonardo and sold by Applebaum. But he's just an hour north of me, so I can go borrow his SBRE Brown Momento Zero anytime I want to. Hey, Scott, thanks so much. 
Russell, yes. Applebaum probably has the best fountain pen day sale of all of them. I've looked around at a number of different sites today and to look at what the uh, percentages are. And uh, Goulet Pens has a pretty good sale. If you spend so much, you get future credit. Uh, and they have some uh, deals going on. Uh, one of which is, I'm going to switch over to my desk camera again. One of it is you can get yourself a Pilot Explorer for $35 US or $36 US. Um, and they throw in the Con70 converter as well, uh, which I think is a pretty good deal. That Con70 converter is... 20 bucks, I believe, US. And uh, so that bring that's like $20 off for that combination. And that's the best combination. I always recommend the Pilot Explorer as uh, an entry level pen. I'm going to go back to my camera again and show you that if I can, there we go. We can focus in eh, which way. That is a Pilot Medium stub that I got on a Pilot Plumix and swapped into my Explorer. And so with that nib off a of Plumix, which is only a, a few bucks, and the Con70, sorry, Con70 converter, the Explorer becomes one hell of a little pen, a beautiful little pen. It comes in a lot of really cool colors as well. James bought two ink vents this year, first and last. Javi C. Hi there. You're a steady watcher all the time, aren't you, Javi? What's your favorite ink to use right now? Um, well, let's see. I'm using a lot of inks. Uh, but I think my favorite uh, might be, and my favorite overall all the time is Conpecky. I put it in everything. Um, I, I have w one full bottle of Conbeck. well, one being used bottle of Conpecky and another full one as a spare. I use it so much. Atlas Stationers has $20, 20% off today. Yep. Thanks, Russell. That's where I got my ink vent calendar last year. William asks, are you ever going to get another M800 Pelican? Well, there's my favorite fountain pen, folks my Pelican M800 in a blue stripe. And I've been looking for another one for a long, long time. And uh, they just don't make the one that I want in a price that I can get. I guess the one that I want uh, is the uh, Streisman, the, the gray and black uh, with silver trim Streisman to, uh, to go with this M800. Uh, but I just haven't been able to afford it. One of these days, I agree, almighty Ohm. Pilot does a great job of interchangeability. What are you going to buy from Applebaum today, Marilyn? Hey, Paul, good to see you. Sebastian has a Plumix. Well, you can swap that into an Explorer. Or a Metropolitan if you have to. But you know what I think about the Metropolitan. Sebastian wants to know about Jacques Urbain, J. Urbain inks. Well, I I was struggling with Conpecky when I was asked that question. Um, I was struggling with between Conpecky and J. Urbain Cayenne du Nepal, which is in my Momento Zero Blue Hawaii, and that's the ink that opens all of my videos. It is such a gorgeous teal ink with a silver sheen a silver shimmer to it. I just love that ink. Paul got an M800 with the brown stripe. Now that's one I would consider too. Great deal on eBay. I'll have to keep my eye out. Emily, Blues Dolls. Hi, new subscriber. Thank you for joining the team. And hi from Canada to Poland. William has an M800 brown too. Well, I, I got to keep up with the Joneses here. Christian bought an M805 Streisman from Cult Pens. Yeah, I think that that's where I got my um, uh, Pelican M800 Blue was from Cult Pens. 
and uh, I keep waiting for them to come back in stock, but they don't seem to. Every push cap pet, oh, I'm sorry. Every push cap pen I own pulls ink from the nib every time I recap. Am I cursed or just doing something wrong? Well, I'd have to... Obviously, it's uh, sucking ink out of the cap. I'm just going to show you this. This is a, a new old pen. Again, I'll put it on my desk cam here. This is a new old pen for me. just came in yesterday. I got this on eBay. This is a 1935 Parker Vacumatic Lockdown Filler in Silver Pearl. And uh, the reason I bring this up, because of the question about the, the cap, um, in the days of old, they used to put holes, ventilation, there it is, ventilation holes in the cap so that the cap wouldn't suck ink out of the nib when you cap and uncap the pen. Maybe some of those other pens should do that. Did Pen BBS discontinue the 456? No, they did not. They might be out of stock right now. I'm not sure. I haven't looked for a while. Do you have to pay any import fees when you order from Applebaum? Oh, yeah. Applebaum ships with what I like to call Deutsche Highway Larceny, or DHL. And regardless of whether it's prepaid or what, um, DHL will add an extra fee on top. They say, oh, it's duty and taxes and stuff. If you look at the receipt, the duty and taxes amounts to nickels and dimes, and then they add 20 bucks, bang, right on top as their handling fee after they've already collected a fee for shipping it. Uh, so, yeah, you have, to, you have to add that extra in. Goulet is now shipping to Canada using DHL. Uh, so expect to add, even though they say it's all in at the time when you check out at Goulet, expect to have extra fees, um, extortion fees, I like to call them, at your door if you want to get the pen. I'm looking to purchase a Twisby Vac Mini with 1.1 stub. Why? There's nothing like Parker Celluloid. They're always beautiful. Absolutely correct. I'm down a big rabbit hole with the Parker Vacumatics, I tell you. Maryland plans to buy a Leonardo Momento Zero in Nuvola with a steel nib. Nice pen. I'm going to be getting a Leonardo too, but I can't decide. It's either a Leonardo Supernova Caramel with ruthenium trim or with steel, uh, silver trim. I can't read your name. It looks Greek. I'll say that's Greek to me. Uh, I, I can't pronounce it. Hello there. One of the best pens I have is a Santini Libra with a flex nib. Everyday use. Perfect writer. I've never heard of that. I'll have to look it up. Undead Crab Stick says when you order from abroad anywhere, you add local value tax uh, to it, tax to it too, not just a fee for import. I haven't found that when you, uh, if you are local, if you're in Amsterdam, for example, and you buy from Apple Bomb, you'll pay their VAT. Uh, or if you're in England, UK uh, cult pens, you'll pay the VAT. But when you check out from another country, it's exempt from that local tax. That's been my experience anyway. George just received a 1920s all-gold wall lever pen for Fountain Pen Day. It's in great condition, but it's heading for the resurrection table. Yeah, I restored a wall all-gold 1920s, and it was a wet noodle of a flex writer. And I sold it. I sold it for a good amount of money and a beautiful pen, and I kind of regret selling it. It uh, kind of looked like my Schaefer. Um... Uh, in terms of the gold content, anyway, my Schaefer Imperial. But this is my gold, gold pen right now. Import tax is required by many EU countries. Well, if you're in the EU, I would expect you'd pay VAT. Simply OBS. Hey there. Good to see you. What do you think is the best pen currently on the market for 50 to 75 bucks? It's really hard to say what's best. That's a that's a weird price range too. It's like you're 
you're not getting into top drawer pens at that level. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be able to answer that because so many things are running through my mind. James says, we know your favorite pen. What's your least favorite? <laughs> I don't own my least favorite anymore, but you can see that video by clicking right up here. No, you can't. Uh, you can see that video by looking up um, Fountain Pen Revolution. Um, and it was, what was it called? Uh, Himalaya 2, version 2. Oh my God, that was the worst pen I've ever experienced. I actually started wearing rubber gloves while I was working with that pen because I, ink was running everywhere. And it wasn't just the pen was lousy, which it was. It might have been a one-off uh, problem, but I've heard other people have problems with that pen as well. But it was the customer service I got from Fountain Pen Revolution. Uh, I think he's from Texas. And he just accused me of doing everything wrong and uh, wouldn't give me my money back. And he finally uh, gave me the price of the pen, but not my shipping and not... I had to return the extra little piece of crap pen that he sent as a gift. Um, but I got a partial return on a crappy pen. And so I don't go there anymore. Mr. Christie, hey, it's going great in Calgary today. We'll see if the flames win or there will be no joy in Mudville. Any news on the Pen BBS 2023 year, year of pen? No news at all. Um... I don't know whether they've dropped the idea, but they sort of ended with the Year of the Tiger, and they didn't do a Year of the Rabbit. So maybe we'll see a Year of the Rabbit uh, in next year. What What's the Chinese year in 2024? The Year of the What? Ever work on a T-O-Z and Kala? Nope, never heard of it. Watching watches. Hey, recently got promoted at work, looking to buy myself a promotion gift sorry my light keeps turning off at 500 usd needs to be extra fine a good one moderately fancy recommendations well 500 us will get you some pretty nice pens um my mind would drift towards a uh, a special edition leonardo momento zero grande uh, for that price, uh, something in celluloid or ebonite. Uh, take a look at leonardopens.com uh, in their special edition section, and you'll see what they have a lot of stuff there that's sold out, but there are some very interesting pens there that are way out of my league. Pilot Kakuno is a good one. Yeah, it's a nice pen. It's uh, sort of like an entry level, uh, rugged little plastic pen. Writes very nicely. Again, those interchangeable nibs. Year of the Dragon. Okay, well, it'll be interesting to see if they skip the, ragon, or the, skip the rabbit and go right to the dragon. Marilyn, yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent. Fountain Pen Revolutions, um, their customer service is really awful. You should have read the hate mail that I got from the, the owner of that uh, distribution for FBR. Uh, it was after he saw my review. He he was miserable to me before. He knew that I had a YouTube channel. Then he saw my video and he really went at me. So, uh, yeah. FPD to you too. Yeah, and the pens are junk. Do you know how I've got all the dragons wrapped up? That's for sure. They got the, they've had the dragons wrapped up for years. 2024, wood dragon year. Well, thank you. Uh, the camera that you're looking at me is uh, my MacBook Pro um, M2. And uh, I was worried about that, that camera right here because it's not the camera I usually use. It's just a webcam. I'm using my iPhone as my desk camera. Okay, 1137. We should uh, come to the next item on the list of things to do today which is what is coming up. And I'm going to flip over to my, my desktop camera and show you guys. Where is it? There it is. You should be seeing my desktop right now. And this is uh, Goulet Pens. It's Fountain Pen Day. And there are the Explorers that you can buy. 
for 36 bucks. Again, I always push the Explorer as a great entry-level pen. If you want to pen-able someone, get them a Pilot Explorer with a Con70 converter, and you're off to the races. Beautiful interchangeable nibs, and it's just a workhorse. I just love the Pilot Explorer. But I wanted to show you guys um, what I'm going to be working on in the next number of weeks in terms of reviews. Uh, this is what is coming to me. This hasn't been released yet, uh, but I'm getting Easy Buy on um, on Etsy. Easy Buy on Etsy. That's Sally. She's sending me one of these. I think it's this one, this blue one here. This is an Asvine P50. I noticed when they first... I don't know where it is. I saw an ad for this wrench uh, on Easy Buy, and it has a number of different uh, size things. Uh, so it works on a Hongdian, it works on uh, piston fillers uh, from uh, Wingsong and so forth. So it's a multi purpose wrench. And so I bought that, but the ad said something about it working on an Asvine P50. I'd never heard of a P50. And then I saw. Uh, my friend Chris uh, Rapsaic do a, a brief intro to the P50. Apparently Sally sent him one before she mentioned it to anybody. Um, of course, she sent it to him for free. I get mine by paying real cash. And so I called her up and I said, Hey Sally, how come you're sending Chris free pens? I'll buy one. So I bought this one. So that's coming. And it looks very interesting. And We'll see that one. Then I ordered one of these at the same time. And I think I ordered the gold one. Yeah. This is a Hongdian A6 piston filler uh, skeleton. It's not my favorite kind of look for a fountain pen. I've had a few of these kind of look hollow pens uh, before. But I thought, well, let's take one for the team. Uh, and they come in a number of different colors here. They come in the the silver with the blue inside, the gold, and the black. So that's a Hongdian A6. That's on its way. And I picked up one of these. It's a Hush 921 large capacity storage ink fountain pen. And so it looks, obviously, it's an eyedropper, but I've never heard of a Hush before. So it'll be interesting to see who makes that. It's got to be either uh, Wingsung, uh, Hongdian, or Moon Man. I don't think there are any other companies in China, other than Pen, Pen BBS, of course. And then there's this Creative Sealed Press Fountain Pen, Automatic Press Pen. And it's one of these uh, retractable, but this one has a little door on the outside. So I thought, well, let's take a look. They're only $14.99. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. So that's coming. And then I ordered a Hongdian N9 uh, in this Snow White look. And that looks like a, a really interesting acrylic uh, fountain pen. We'll care it, you know, I'll compare it to some of the other uh, Hongdians uh, that we have. And I don't know what the company is here, but again, we'll find out. This is an A108 acrylic fountain pen. I got it in this desert, desert spring color because I like that look of that acrylic. It looks uh, somewhat similar uh, to some of my Leonardo pens. And then another one of those gold filigree hollow kind of pens. I ordered the um, Jinhao Century 100 uh, in this gold uh, color. It comes in black, red, gold, or black, black and gold. P90 Camper, who makes Asvine? I think it's Moon Man. Uh, people from China are arguing with me, but uh, it doesn't matter if you have uh, Moon Man make it for you and you put your name on it, it's still a Moon Man. That's what they say about the lemon, right? I say the lemon is uh, Hongdian because it's completely parts replaceable, interchangeable with the Hongdian. And... Uh, but someone says, well, Lemon is a different company, but they have Hongdian 
make their pens for well it's handy and then isn't it and now we're going to get into my shopping this is my shopping for pen day fountain pen day i want to buy a leonardo supernova regular caramel either in the silver trim or it whoops stop that or in the ruthenium trim now i've never had a supernova before and the supernova actually comes in a larger size that's the piston filler version and they're the size of a momento zero grande but this is a flat ended uh, fountain pen flat bottom flat top the size of a momento zero and the key feature of this one is that there's no step on the outside when you cap uh, the pen there's no step right there so you end up with a step right there but that section should be long enough uh, to make that a comfortable writer and it comes in a number of cool colors four of them but i like this because it reminds me so much of my my fake leonardo let's turn it into my desk again here there's my fake leonardo momento zero that's a moon man m800 uh terrific pen um Yes, it is an absolute copy, and it's almost a clone. Uh, well, it is a clone, but it's almost a direct copy. It just doesn't say Leonardo on it anywhere. But I put a Leonardo 14 karat gold uh, Jack Hernandez ground architect nib on my M800 in this beautiful pen BBS amber as a cat kind of look i think this supernova with this beautiful caramel color will be very similar to that pen so let me go back here and catch up on my chat moon man's released the a3 and no i'm not seeing that i'll take well maybe i have seen that i'll take a look hush looks like a wing song yep it does look at the n9 we're waiting for a review about jd metal Big fountain pen and Pilot Custom 845 fountain pen replica. Distorted a Pelican M400 in the brown tortoise. Just the, you know, I love those colors and finishes from Pelican. It's just the pen isn't big enough for me. Yeah, I missed the A3. I'm going to go back and order one. Isn't Sally easy by the wife of one of the CEOs of Moon Man? Your guess is as good as mine, but... Uh, certainly they are the storefront for uh, Moon Man, Mad John, Asvine. Sancho just purchased a Twisby Vac Mini, the 2020 Inkvent calendar. Congratulations. Remember, they have a really nice return policy, Twisby does. Why, thank you, Sailcat. That's very generous of you. Thank you very much. I'll probably order one of those Centennial 100 hollow or skeleton pens in a couple of weeks. I want the smoke gray and black metal trim. Yeah. It looks like an interesting pen, Night Owl. Yeah, finally a flat top and bottom Leonardo Sopu Supernova. The one thing uh, simply obs about the uh, Supernova is that that um, end finial does not unscrew like the Memento Zero does. I thought that would that's a lost opportunity to use an extended cartridge um, converter and uh, take the end off that pen. I mean, there must be some reason why they didn't do that. Supernova is a great pen. You have one in in Stardust. I'm glad you think it's great. I haven't bought mine yet. You guys have to tell me, should I get the silver trim or the ruthenium? I'm kind of leaning towards the ruthenium trim, that black with the black in the amber uh, acrylic. kind of looks cool. I'm not a big silver fan. Christian wants to go with the black. Parker Vacuumatic question. It's P90 Camper. Never owned one, but I'm very interested if you're going to be recommending one, which would it be? I prefer the larger, yeah, the larger size uh, vacuumatic. Um, I prefer the ones that uh, were pre-19, when did they change over to, it's like generation two. Uh, it's the um, uh, ones that are the, um, it's not the lockdown filler. It's the one that came after it. it as the longer uh, 
blind cap on the back in the larger size. I am actually going to be re, um, renovating, restore, restoring a, um, a Parker Vacuumatic Demi. It's this one here. And compared to, here we go, let's compare these two pens. Yep, there we go. So this is the large size. This is a 1935. This one's more like 1945. Uh, but this is a demi or ladies size uh, fountain pen. They're very tiny. So this is way too small for me. So when I fix this pen, I'll probably be selling it. But this silver pearl lockdown, no way, Jose. If Pelican made an M1000 in brown tortoise, I don't care if it was 1400 bucks, I'd buy it in a second. Yeah, and you wouldn't eat for a month, right? <laughs> Hey, Michael. Welcome. Good afternoon. 46 Parker Vacuumatic Silver Pearl. Is that one that I sold you? That's a nice pen. Need to start an underground railroad to get Doug his pen purchases. <laughs> I think you're right, Russell. Majon couldn't help themselves. Ugliest pen of the year will be the new N102 pen pencil combo just released. They did give us the A3 simultaneously. What do you think about the Moonman Wankai Mini? I've seen them. I never actually uh, uh, pulled the trigger on one. Um, I've got, uh, I, I gave it to my wife because she really likes it. I've got one of those little uh, Pen BBS lipstick uh, pens that kind of does what the Wankai Mini does. Uh, and uh, she loves it because it fits in her purse perfectly. But uh, tiny pens like that, other than something I can anodize, um, aren't really up my alley. This little pen from Gravitas is really kind of cool. Um, and the reason I really like it is because uh, Ben gave me this one. <laughs> if I had to pay for this, I don't think I would buy it. Um, I, and it's not because it isn't utilitarian. It is. It's a wonderful pen. But I'm just not out and about, pardon my Canadian, I'm just not out and about a lot. Um, if I was still working and going to the office every day, this would be something I'd probably carry with me everywhere, uh, because it is a really a nice traveler pen. When I was choosing which pen to buy, I watched your pen review videos and got a lot of help from your views and measurements. Thank you so much. Thank you, GM. That's, uh, I really appreciate that. Someone just said, oops, Ken, did you just buy something? Gravitas has 25% off. Wow. Well, now's the time to pick one up. Yeah, I've got a Paul Temp. Again, this is one that, that Ben gave me. Would I actually buy one of these? Uh, they're very pricey, but I might do a video uh, shootout with my favorite vacuum, vacuumatic uh, or vac filler. Um, the Pen BBS 456 is my favorite, but I got a feeling that if it weren't for the price, this is a better, much better pen than the Pen BBS 456. This Ultem material is incredible. That section on that pen is incredible. And the way this pen is built is incredible as well. It's a really lovely, well-built fountain pen. And it's priced that way too. Marilyn says I'd get silver trim, but you should do what you like. Well, I will anyway, you know that. I once had a problem with a ruthenium coated nib and it put me off. Well, my light keeps going off. I know that it might just be me because other people have had difficulty with, you know, people have difficulty with almost every pen company, but uh, I've never had any difficulty other than getting Salvatore's attention. Um, I had some issues with a very expensive pen that I bought last year for Fountain Pen Day, which is this one. This is my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande in Jonathan Brooks' uh, Earth Magic 2. It's the Dutch Pen Show fountain pen with a 14 karat gold nib and ebonite feed. And it has the Dutch Pen Show plume and ink bottle on it. And when I first got it, ink just seeped up through that nib. Um, 
I couldn't stop it. It just kept seeping up through the um, engraving, the laser engraving. So the laser engraving had actually pierced the nib. Um, so I uh, complained about it to Salvatore, and he said, well, you know, I'll send you a new one. And that's great. And six months later, I was still bugging him. Can you please send me that? Oh, yeah, it's in the mail, it's in the mail, it's in the mail. So it was like eight months. <laughs> it felt like it was probably more like four or five months uh, before I got a nib replacement uh, for that. But he did replace it for me, so I can't complain. I've got the, the pen. It's beautiful, and it's working beautifully. Yeah, noodle soup for a month. Well, that's what you'll have to do. You tell anybody you spent $1,400 on a pen, they'll lock you up. The pen BBS 471 with a number six nib is head and shoulders above the wine kai. I agree. It's still, again, not a pen that I use. Uh, that's why I gave it to my wife. She does use it, but she's got a use for it. Miss Marilyn, welcome. Good to see you. Gravitas pen's lack of a clip is kind of a deal breaker. Yeah. And that is a deal breaker for many people. It's like other things are deal breakers, right? If it doesn't post, that's a deal breaker Deal breaker for some people. I just consider pens that haven't got clips as uh, desk pens. Russell just made a pen purchase. Bennu Talisman Tiger's Eye in Broad. A couple of Warangal. The Great Sage, Heaven's Equal, Glistening. Well, there's a mouthful for you. Hey, Stephen, good to see you. So I think I've made my decision. Let's go over. And I'm going to buy the ruthenium. And we'll see if we have any issues with the, the trim on it, having uh, corrosion or flaking or whatever. But I think it'd be interesting to have a Leonardo with this black nib. So I'm going to go to, I'm also doing something else here. I'm just going to bring this over because I had both in here. So I'm going to take the one with the steel, the silver trim out of my cart. And the Apple Bomb website is very slow. I mean, it's very slow every day, but today it's doubly slow, <laughs> doubly slow, just in celebration of Fountain Pen Day. There. I'm sure you put the brakes on the page just for our edification. I'm also adding a Leonardo Momento Zero steel nib uh, for my friend Ron because he goes through them like potato chips. I'm trying to teach him to be a little bit more gentle on his pens, but uh, so he says, get me a backup. So next time you go to Apple Bomb, get me a backup. So here is a nib in broad for him. Uh, so I've added that to my cart. These are Canadian prices, so don't uh, have a heart attack, folks. And... I'm going to check out and see whether I can do this while live streaming. Let's see. I'm going to check my cart twice before I click proceed to check out. Talk amongst yourselves while I buy a pen. I think I'm going to leave that until later because it is not doing it for me. Anyway, I'll wait until I'm offline. But thank you for your help. I'm going to get the ruthenium trim. We look at our agenda and I go to number four. Future live stream topics. And speaking of have a topic and discuss. Um, if this, I should tell you that this uh, live stream is recording and I'm going to put it up tomorrow instead of a regular uh, pen review uh, for everyone who couldn't make it today to watch our discussion. Uh, and of course, I'm going to heavily edit it so that I take all my stumbles and all my uh, stupid things that I've said and uh, clean it up for the public. Uh, so I want to know from you uh, what you think some topics might be for the next live stream. And I'm thinking if I do this on the first Friday of every month, then we can have a topic for the month. So next live stream would be in December, the first Friday in December. I don't know what that date might be, but I'm thinking that the topic might be, what do you want for Christmas? And then in January, maybe, what did you get for Christmas? And please insert the, the lucrative gift-giving season for Christmas. Um, that's probably what I'll do when I edit. I'll edit in the lucrative gift-giving season instead of Christmas. 
Uh, another topic might be vintage pens. We could just sit and talk about vintage. I could talk for hours about vintage pens. Um, maybe it, closer to spring, we could talk about uh, spring cleaning and uh, cleaning tips for uh, cleaning your tips. And maybe another one might be your favorite inks, that kind of thing. So uh, what other suggestions might you have for topics for future live chats? Now that I think I've got my head around the software, let me scroll back and see whether I missed anyone coming in. Hello to all you people who have just arrived. Tor Hilder says, if you don't use an aggressive ultrasonic cleaner, the ruthenium should last like any other metal plating. It's a good tip. You really just need to flush your pens regularly with distilled water. If you're in a place where that has soft water, you can use tap water. But if you're in a place like Calgary, where it all comes right off the mountain and is full of rocks, uh, then you need to use distilled water. How's the weather? The weather's actually quite nice here right now. We got a dump of snow that stuck around for Halloween. I don't remember. I've been here in Calgary 35 years. I don't remember a Halloween where we haven't had snow. I'm from the east. I'm from Ontario. I grew up in Ontario, and we used to go out in shirt sleeves um, in our costumes on Halloween. But it's beautiful here today. Yeah, thanks, Russell. I can multitask, but <laughs> yeah, it's whether my brain clicks in or not. Tori Hilder, it's raining ink and pens. It's rain and pens. Hallelujah. The weather's always awful in the UK, Harry. Welcome to Coffee Talk. What are we discussing? She's like butter. Like two sticks of butter. Melded together in a rough hewn manner. Yeah, very slow, Apple Bomb. It's twice as slow as regular, which is slow. The only thing that's fast on the Apple Bomb website is the little guy that runs by the screen when they're taking the video of the Boston shop. I think that's Yoast running by the camera. First of first Friday in December is the first of December. Perfect. So what do you want for Christmas, little boy? I will ask in the live stream on December 1st. What did you learn about various manufacturers while you were pen hunting in China? That must be a question for someone else. I've never been to China myself. What time would the live stream be? Well, I started this at 11 o'clock my time. I'm in mountain time, in which is 10 o'clock Pacific. And it ends up being like 1 o'clock in the East Coast, the U.S. And so it's a Friday. I'm figuring a lot of people are at work, but maybe some people will be able to catch it during a lunch hour, that kind of thing. And it gives me a little bit of time to uh, wake up, have a coffee. I don't drink coffee. Have a tea. Oh, forgot I had tea. Mm, it's still hot. And uh, get my shit together, pardon me, get my stuff together uh, and be able to be ready and uh, ready for on-camera work at uh, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock Pacific time. So I think that's where I'm going to stay. Um, I would do it on a Saturday, but I have videos that go up on Saturday and Sunday. It's sort of my pattern. I have been... Uh, doing a review on Saturday, a restoration on Sunday, and now and then throwing in a short video on a Wednesday uh, as sort of a regular pattern. Tell us about your acoustic guitar. I'm a classical guitar player. Um, I have a number of acoustic guitars, but my favorite acoustic guitar, my best, my finest acoustic guitar, is this. This is, there we go. This is a Gibson J200. Uh, it's a replica of the uh, first generation that were made in the 1930s. Uh, this, so this is called the Golden Age. 
they only made um, 75 of these uh, because it was in honor of the 75th anniversary of the J200. Um, and I got it secondhand, but I got it for an incredible deal. I would not be able to afford this otherwise. Uh, but this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous fountain pen. The, the fountain pen. <laughs> you see what I got on the brain? <laughs> this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous guitar. Um, it's the finest acoustic guitar I've ever played. And I've played a lot of acoustic guitars. Uh, so that's saying something. That's that's my go-to acoustic guitar right there. It sits right next to me at my desk so I can play it anytime. And that's the guitar you see in the intro that I play as well. Thanks for asking. I could talk forever about that guitar. Um, actually, let me tell you a story about that guitar, how I got it. Uh, when I retired from teaching, I decided to go work at our local guitar shop, which is Long & McQuaid. It's a chain in Canada. Wonderful stores. Um, I decided, well, you know, I'm not going to just sit around and do nothing. After I retire, I love guitars. I could probably sell them. Uh, so I worked for Long & McQuaid for a couple of years, and every year they had this, what they call Jack's Attic Sale, uh, where they sell off uh, a lot of their stock. Uh, for huge savings. So the first attic sale came up and while I was working at the store this guy came in with a number of guitars and this was one of them, that J200. And he was selling it. He had bought it brand new when it came out for like $8,000 uh, Canadian and uh, was selling it just a couple of years later. Never really played it. Um, because he wanted to buy something else. You know, there are those people that buy $1,400 fountain pens. They're the, those type. And uh, so he traded it, and I think we gave him three grand for it. <laughs> Incredible. I said, okay. Uh, and I looked at that guitar. I had a J200, and I thought, I can probably get some good money for my J200. And with my discount at Long McQuaid, I can buy that guitar. And so I was ready to do that. And when I came back from lunch, I found that the guitar manager had put that guitar in the attic sale. Employees weren't allowed to buy out of the attic sale. Um, so I thought I'm really a SOL. Um, and then my wife said, well, I don't work at Long McQuaid. I can go buy it for you. So she lined up. I mean, there was a lineup down the street to get into the store first thing. She lined up with her um, uh, lawn chair and a cup of coffee uh, and waited to get into the store. She got into the store, went right for that guitar, said, I want this. And she bought that guitar for me uh, out of the attic sale. And uh, I was able to sell my J200. And so I got that guitar for a song. And uh, so it's, it's my favorite, not only because it's the best guitar I've ever played, it is also my favorite because my wife bought it for me. So there's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Perhaps some live guitar playing? I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see, maybe in a future one. I haven't practiced anything. Marilyn works on Fridays, just taking time away for Fountain Pen Day. We'll catch you. Yeah, I'll, I think my plan is that I will do these live on the first Friday. Uh, of the month and then uh, edit the recording and put it up on the Saturday so everybody can see uh, the live chat. Hey Wolf, good to see you. How's your pen? I can't remember what pen I sold you. Tell me what pen I sold you, but I know it was a nice one. Tell me it was that gold wall, 1920s, was it? We were talking about that earlier. Nib tuning would be an interesting topic. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea. Um, I've got a couple of videos that I've done on nib tuning, but uh, I generally talk about that in the middle of another video, and then I lose track of where it was. So someone says, where did you do your nib tuning? I can't remember. Thank you, Sebastian. Okay, Tori Hilder says, topic suggestions. One, pen trends. Yep, good idea, because I'll learn more from you guys than I know. What model among the big pen brands of yesteryears you wish to make a comeback? Well, that's an easy one. Parker, Vacumatic. Why don't they make the Vacumatic? 
Um, Wing Sung makes the 601, which I think is a fantastic pen. And it has the modern pump on it. So it's not even a... a Chris gets on my case about calling it a, a vacuumatic because it's not. The Wing Sung is a piston, a pump piston. And why don't they make uh, that modern pump piston in a, even an acrylic kind of vacuumatic pen? I think that would be fabulous. Miss Marilyn's going live 1 p.m. Pacific every day for ink reviews. Is Are you going to be doing the um, ink vent calendar every day, Marilyn? I'd, I'd tune in to see that. 6 p.m. in the UK, TJ. It's a great time for you. Excellent. So you were in the waiting list. I saw there was one people, one person waiting for the stream to go live. I figured it was you. Thank you, Marilyn. Yes, that guitar is gorgeous. What size nib does that guitar have? <laughs> Big. I'm looking at getting an Epiphone 12 string. They have a hummingbird version. All solid wood for $900, made in China. Yeah, it is, uh, William, it, that Epiphone 12 string is actually a very nice guitar. It's heavy because it's, uh, I think the neck is laminated. Uh, but uh, it it doesn't sound like, of course, it doesn't sound like, you see this, oh, see this one right here? That's an actual Gibson 12 string acoustic hummingbird. And uh, that's another guitar story. But that's a fabulous 12-string. I would say for the same $900 on the Epiphone, try out the um, Yamaha FG 800 12-string. Yeah, 800 series. There might be an 810, 820, 830. FG 800 12-string. Um, the Yamaha 12-string is excellent. Uh, for the money, and it might be less than nine hundred dollars. You might be in around the nine, uh, the seven hundred dollar range for that twelve string. I'm not sure. I've been out of that pricing of that for a f number of years. The Guild five fifteen, sorry, the Guild fifteen twelve, Guild. If it's a vintage Guild, uh, that's an excellent, excellent guitar. And the rosewood back and sides on that will keep the. Um, 12 string from roar, roaring, you know, that roar sound you get out of a, a 12 string that actually vibrates too much. The rosewood keeps it in check. Happy guitar day. Yeah. <laughs> Fountain pen shows should hire Doug to provide live music. The pen shows. Yeah, right. I'll be a busker and you can tip me with pens. <laughs> Just throw me a Leonardo. It's 615 there for you, George. Perfect time. And it was the wall. Yeah, we were talking about that before you came in, I think, Wolf. Um, someone was talking about buying a wall 1920s uh, gold, solid gold pen. And I thought, oh, I remember that one that I restored and I sold. And I keep thinking, I don't know whether I should have sold that pen. Marilyn's doing a live stream of the ink vent calendar every day through December. So I won't have to do all the work. <laughs> We can go and watch Miss Marilyn. Miss Marilyn is an expert on inks, I can tell you, and on uh, calligraphy and uh, fine writing. You know, with that swoopy kind of writing, I can't do. Hey, Gutarina, good to see you. It's 1930 military time in Spain. Arena feeling by Michael Vivo, Felix Manners, playing on Apple Music. Well, don't do that. Hey, Google, mute. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. Well, thank you, Marilyn. That's very nice of you. And we're now at, wow, we're at, uh, my time is 1219. We've been at this for an hour and 20 minutes. So, I don't think there's anything else on my list. Yeah, I did that, did that, did that, did that twice. Yeah, did that. Show that. What else did I want to show you? Oh, I wanted to show you something before I go. This is another uh, pen review coming up. Let's go to the desk. Get rid of the Leo. Ooh, there's a Delta. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's not bad. It's this. Take a look at this, guys. It's not just a rickshaw bag. Um, those of you who've been watching me will know that uh, John Hubbard of um, Artcraft Pens 
uh, did the Moonwalk pen and the Mars Rover pen. They're 3D printed and sent them to me for review. Uh, well, he's just sent me this new one, and it's his first design, actually. Uh, but it's a 3D printed pen, and it's called the Piano Pen. Here it is. This is, whoops, turn it around. This is 3D printed, and that's a raised surface on there. You can feel all those keys. And it's polished. So in, in comparison to the, the other 3D pens, which had quite a rough texture on them. This one's very, very smooth. Light plastic. It's a screw top, and you can see the, the, the top curves with the keys, which is really nice. And it has a number six size black Franklin Kristoff Yovo nib. And this one is in medium, black plastic feed, and it is a converter. So you're going to see this 3D printed pen. Let me post. You're going to see this 3D printed pen in a review coming, I think, next Saturday, a week tomorrow. I'll be reviewing this pen. I just got it the other day. So I wanted to show that off before we go. And it came in a really nice Rickshaw bag. Yeah, fascinating pen. He says this was his first design. Here's the moonwalk, came in this rickshaw bag, and it has Neil Armstrong or Buzz Aldrin's footprint in the moon, moon craters, it's all very textured, and it has, we came in peace for all mankind. This is a pull top, same nib. He made the Mars Rover, there's the Mars Rover, and you can see the tire tracks of the Rover on the surface of Mars. This one's a screw top, same Franklin Christoph black Yovo number six size nib, cartridge converter, and matching whoops, matching rickshaw bag. So I'll look forward to those. Yeah, it's excellent printing. Where to buy join seals for piston fountain? Where where to buy join seals for piston fountain pen? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, are you talking about the O-rings on the piston? It depends on the brand. Pen BBS sells a parts bag that has O-rings and piston parts and things like that, but they're specifically for the Pen BBS. Other brands, the O-rings might fit, but not the other parts. Okay, well, thank you very much everyone for joining in and helping me select a pen on Fountain Pen Day. And uh, uh, I'm hoping that I will be able to do this again at the beginning of December. Um, I'm going to read through this chat and take a lot of your suggestions um, for topics and so forth, but I think the topic uh, for the beginning of December is going to be uh, what are you going to what do you want for the lucrative gift giving season coming up uh, towards the end of December. Uh, so uh, without any further ado, Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me on my very first uh, live stream for Inquiring Minds on Fountain Pen Day. And happy Fountain Pen Day, everyone out there. So long. I made this.